Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd on the Street, and today we're installing Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. Alright everyone, Ubuntu 2404, codenamed Noble Numrat, came out just a few months ago, earlier this year. I have gotten a chance to use it a little bit, I have not made a video about it yet, but seeing as my 2204 installation video is still one of my highest performing videos every month, I figured I might as well make a 2404 one here. So today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu on your computer. Ubuntu is a very common distribution that beginners start off with, so if you're new to Linux, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to set up and start using. Now you are going to need a couple of things as pre requisites to this. For one thing, you're going to need a flash drive, and the Ubuntu installation image is about 6 gigabytes. It's pretty large this time around. So you're going to want a flash drive that's about 8 gigabytes or larger in order to install this. If you've got a smaller one, there are net install and other images you can look into, but I'm just going to show you the standard image. 8 gigabytes is going to make your life easier. The other big prerequisite, you're going to need a computer that you're going to install Ubuntu onto, obviously, and you do want to back up all of the files that are on that computer. I'm going to show you how to do a standard clean install installation that is going to leave Ubuntu as the only operating system on the machine. You can always put Windows back on it later, but this process of installing Ubuntu as I'm going to show it to you is going to wipe out everything else on the drive that you select. So if you have any files that you want to save on the computer, make sure to back them up to an external storage drive, a cloud provider, or somewhere else, another computer, where they won't be affected when you wipe the drive that you install Ubuntu to. That's just about everything you need. I'm going to show you how to create the installation image first, then we'll install. So I'm going to go ahead and cut to the desktop. Okay everyone, and here we are on the desktop. As you can see, I'm going to show you how to create the installation image from Windows 11, just as an example, but the method I'm going to show you will actually work on all operating systems. So if you've got a Mac or you're already on Linux, no worries. So I'm going to open up a web browser, and the first place we're going to go is ubuntu.com in order to download Ubuntu. Now, as you can see on the homepage here, Canonical is not necessarily prioritizing the desktop. There's no download button right on the front page, other than for a white paper, which is not what we're looking for. In fact, the entire Ubuntu section of the website is somewhat hidden from Ubuntu.com. You got to go to products up here and then click Ubuntu desktop. From there, we're going to click on the green download Ubuntu desktop button. And then right here, we have a green download 24.04 LTS button. So we'll click on that. And that's going to start our download here. You don't actually have to sign up for the newsletter here, so do not feel obligated to do that. As you can see, like I said, the image is quite large at 5.7 gigabytes. They rounded up to six on their website for telling you how large it is. That is going to take a few minutes to download. While that is running, we're going to open up a new tab, and I'm going to go and download a tool to flash Ubuntu onto a flash drive. For that, we're going to go to etcher.io, that is E-T-C-H-E-R dot I-O. This is a quite old tool that's going to redirect me to where it lives now. And if you're on Mac OS and you want to use Disk Utility, or if you're on Linux and you already know of a different tool to do this, you can flash the ISO image onto your flash drive using whatever program you want. Uh, but Etcher is available for all major platforms, so we're going to click on the green Download Etcher button. As you can see, you've got Linux, Mac OS, and as I've got here, Windows. I'll go ahead and click on that and it's going to download quite a bit faster than the Ubuntu image. Now, even though this exe file has setup in the name, you don't really have to install it. It just extracts itself and then opens up automatically. So I'll just click on that to open it up. And in just a moment here, we will get our Etcher application window. At this point, I do need to wait for that Ubuntu image to finish downloading. All right, and that is finally finished downloading. So with that out of the way, I will minimize the web browser and we're back here in Etcher. Etcher is a very simple program. It's got three steps, as you can see. First, we're going to select our file, and I'll just navigate over to our Downloads folder, and there's Ubuntu 2404. I'll open that up. Next, we select our target. As you can see, I have not plugged in my USB flash drive yet, so there's nothing in the list here. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. After just a moment, that flash drive shows up in the list. Before we proceed here, the flash drive will also be wiped, so don't use your backup drive for this. Use a different flash drive specifically for the installation. All right, so we've selected our image, we've selected our drive. Next, all we have to do is click Flash, and that's going to begin the process. We'll click Yes on the user account control here on Windows and we have begun flashing. This part of the process, as well as the rest of the installation, will depend on your specific flash drive, how fast it is, what version of USB it's using, and how fast the computer's port is. As you can see, for me, it's going to take, again, a few minutes, so I'll be right back when that's close to completion. All right, so as you can see, I have finished flashing at this point, and after Azure finishes flashing the image, it will go through and validate the image, just reading it back and comparing it to that file one more time. 
All right, and at this point you can see that flash is completed. So at this point we can go ahead and close out of Etcher. And back here on the desk, I can go ahead and unplug that USB drive from the computer now. Now I'm going to pull this laptop off of the desk, and here's the one we're installing Ubuntu onto today. So plug in the flash drive into the computer you're installing too, and the next couple of steps are actually going to depend on your specific computer. I can't give you the steps for every single computer out there because different brands are different and even different models within the same brand are sometimes different, but you're going to need to access the boot menu for your computer. If you turn your computer on, for a lot of brands it will actually say somewhere on the screen, press this button to access the BIOS or UAFI setup menu, and then another button to access the boot menu. So I'm going to turn this computer on here here, this is a System76 laptop running their open firmware, which means I'm going to get a prompt here in a moment to hit the escape key. And I'll go ahead and do that. So in your firmware menu for your computer, you're just going to want to go and you can change the boot order if you need to, if you can't figure out how to just do a one-time boot. But really all we need to do is boot from the flash drive this one time. So here I'm going to go to one-time boot. And at the bottom of the list here, this is the name of my flash drive. So I'm going to select that and that's going to boot us up into the flash drives grub menu here. And I'm going to select try or install Ubuntu, the default option. Now again, this boot up sequence that we're seeing here will vary in length based on the speed of the port and the drive that you're using. But after just a couple minutes here, we've got our welcome to Ubuntu screen, which is going which is going to load up our installer. And I have quickly set up a capture card so you can see what's on the screen here in a little bit higher quality. But now we can go through the Ubuntu installer and most of these things are going to be pretty straightforward. You probably didn't have to watch a video to figure out how to do this. We're going to select our language, English is the default. Next up, if you need any accessibility options, you can select those here. I'm just going to continue on. We'll select our keyboard layout. Again, English US is the default. And next we'll connect to the internet. I would recommend doing this generally. Obviously we downloaded six gigabytes of data and flashed it onto that flash drive earlier, so you can install offline if you want to. But if you do connect to the internet, you can do things like download updates while we're installing, which will save you time after the installation's finished. So I'll go ahead and select my network here. I'll click connect and I'll continue on. And here we have options to try or install Ubuntu. So this is actually a fully functional live environment that we're in right now. Um, you can go and open up applications. If you've never used Linux before and you wanna check it out, see if it's easy enough for you to use, you can actually do it without even touching the installed operating system that's already on your computer. You can try it out right now. It is going to run a little bit slowly because everything that's loaded up here is coming directly off of that flash drive over USB. And you're also going to have limits on how much stuff you can install and how much data you can save Basically, any changes you make right now are only going to be happening in your RAM. So if you've got, say, 8 gigabytes of RAM, you can't make more than 8 gigabytes worth of changes to this live environment right now. Uh, but if you do just want to try out the live environment, you can click Try Ubuntu. If you click Close right here, it will actually just quit the installer and you can try it out. Obviously, I'm making a video here about how to install Ubuntu, so we're going to select that one. Um, over here, we're going to select Interactive Installation because we are sitting in front of a GUI right now and interacting with the computer. And next we get to select what apps we want to install. So I'm going to show you the default selection and as it calls it, it's just the essentials. It's going to be a quicker installation. It is going to have less pre-installed stuff once the installation is finished. So you're going to have a little bit less, you might call it bloatware if you don't like it. If you do like it, um, it's just gonna be less utilities and stuff that are installed. As you can see, the extended selection says it's got an offline friendly selection of office tools, particularly it will install LibreOffice and a few more utilities. Now anything in the extended selection that you want you can go back and install that stuff after the installation is complete. So this is not anything permanent. I'm just going to show you how to have the streamlined default selection. So we'll go with that one. This next page offers us third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. Some of that's going to be proprietary. As you can see, the description says it includes, but is not limited to, the NVIDIA drivers. This particular laptop that I'm showing you does have an NVIDIA graphics card, so I am going to select that. And down here, we have the option to install codecs for MP3, MP4, video and audio formats like that. I'm going to go ahead and select that as well. Unless you're particularly trying to avoid proprietary software on the system, there's no reason why you shouldn't just check both of these. So clicking on next again, the next page is our disk setup. Now I've already got Ubuntu installed on this system, so it's giving me an option to automatically partition the system and install this new Ubuntu installation alongside the old one. That's not what I wanna do. I'm just going to select erase disk and install Ubuntu. So if you just wanna have Ubuntu on your computer, clean slate, this is what you're gonna to wanna to select. Depending on your OS, if you do want to dual boot, if you get an automatic option like this, then you can absolutely select that if you're not ready to go full on Ubuntu 
If you don't get that automatic option and you do want to partition, then you'd have to go down here to manual installation. It's going to give you options to resize your partitions and everything. And if you're going to do that, you should really have a backup of all your files anyway, just in case any of that does go wrong. Like I said, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to erase disk and install Ubuntu. If you're wondering what's in the advanced features here, this is where you can select to use logical volume management if you want to do something a little bit more complicated with your partition setup. LVM is also how you would have full disk encryption if you want to enable that. We also have the experimental option to use ZFS, which is a more modern file system but is not part of the Linux kernel due to licensing issues. And you can also use encryption if you select the ZFS option. I love ZFS. I use it on my network attached storage, but I would not recommend installing it on your desktop just because it is still experimental for desktop usage and is not fully integrated in with Linux. That said, it is generally a best practice to use full disk encryption on systems, especially a laptop like the one I'm using. There's really no reason not to. The performance impact, if you're wondering, is negligible on any modern computer. So just to show you what that looks like, I am going to select that option. Again, if you don't care about full disk encryption, if you want to be able to pull your files off without remembering a password later, then you can just select none and go with the defaults. But I am going to click next here with that option set up. Since I selected that LVM with encryption option, I'm being given the option to create a passphrase. This is a different password than the one that you'll use to actually log in and perform actions when your computer boots. This is just a basically a startup password that is going to decrypt your disk when you turn the computer on. It's not a BIOS password, it's on the disk itself, but it's actually more secure than a BIOS password because unlike that one, this encryption passphrase will still be required if someone removes the storage drive from this computer and puts it in another one. So I am going to enter in a passphrase here. We will want to confirm it. As you can see, if you lose your encryption passphrase, you will lose all of your data. It's pretty easy to go in and reset the user account password in Linux if you forget that one, and even the root password, you can reset that. However, if you forget the encryption password, it basically renders your entire storage drive just random data. So if you're gonna write anything down on a piece of paper, uh, this is the one you'd want to write down and make sure you don't forget. So I'll click on next, and here's where we actually set up our user account. So I'm gonna type in my name. As you can see, we get some default options in the computer name and username. I like to set mine a little bit differently than what Ubuntu suggests. I'm just gonna put in the model number of the computer I'm using for the computer name. And then the username just needs to be all lowercase. I do like to make it just my first name. But you can set those to whatever you want. The computer name at least can be changed later. Even the username can be if you want to. So here I'm going to set up my user password and you might wanna just make this the same as your encryption password if that makes it easier to remember. But again, this one's the one you're actually going to use to log in to unlock the computer after it wakes up from sleep and to perform administrative tasks like installing updates. All right, so we'll go ahead and click next here and it's going to automatically detect my time zone. If it doesn't, then you can click where you are on the map. Click on next again and this is the last page. It's going to ask us to review all of our choices we've made. Take a look at this carefully. Once again, the way that I'm showing you how to do this with erasing the disk and installing Ubuntu will absolutely wipe out everything that's on the storage drive already. Down here, we're going to have our EFI partition and our boot partition. Those actually won't be encrypted, but the final partition with all of our user data on it, that one's the one that's going to have that LVM structure on it and our encryption will be there. So we'll click install here. And Ubuntu is going to give you a little bit of a slideshow that you can watch while we're waiting for that installation to complete. If you wanna see the details of what's happening in the installation, you can go ahead and click this icon in the bottom right. It's gonna open up a terminal that actually shows you exactly what it's doing. It's going to plug in everything that you put in in the installer earlier into basically commands that it's running automatically. So all that's running here in the terminal. If you do wanna see the nice uh, slideshow that they have, we can click through that. They're advertising some proprietary apps, some open source apps, got some coding apps here. We've got some creative apps, gaming apps. Really just advertising a lot of apps these days, I guess. And their slideshow. On the final page here, we're going to have some links. You actually can click on these links. Um, once again, since we're running in an actual live environment, this is a working Ubuntu environment that we're in. If you click on one of these links, it will open up Firefox and go to whichever link you clicked on. So you can go and read a little bit about Ubuntu, read the documentation, check out what people are saying while you're actually waiting for it to finish installing. Just remember any bookmarks or anything that you save in this live environment, they're not going to be there when you reboot here into the installed system in a moment. So I'm gonna open up the terminal again. We'll just watch this run. And the installation is complete. So at this point, once again, we could click continue testing. That would exit the installer and you can keep using the live environment. But as the installer notes, any changes you make in this live environment will not be saved. So we wanna click the green button that says restart now. And I'm gonna cut back to the camera here because when we restart, 
this is going to eventually ask us to go ahead and remove that USB drive. We've got some errors after it. You don't have to worry about those. As you can see, it says, please remove the installation medium. That's our flash drive, then press enter. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll unplug the flash drive and I'll press enter. So now the computer will reboot. It should boot up much quicker this time since we're going off of our internal SSD and not that flash drive anymore. And we're going to get a grub screen here. It's going to give us a 30 second countdown. If you don't wanna wait through that, you can just hit enter on the default option, Ubuntu. And since we selected that LVM with encryption option, this is the encryption or decryption screen. So it says, please unlock disk dmcrypt zero. Just type in the encryption passphrase that you set up. I'll type that in and then hit enter. And it said set up successfully there for a split second. So after our disk has been decrypted, it's just going to boot like normal right here to our login screen. So here you can select your name that you typed in before. Again, type in your user account password that we selected. Hit enter. And that'll log us right in to the Ubuntu desktop. All right, and switching over to the capture card again, this is the first start wizard that we're gonna get when we log in for the first time. They offer to let us set up Ubuntu Pro, which you can use if you need advanced security or compliance features. We're just going to skip that. Here we have the option to either send in analytics to Canonical to improve Ubuntu or not share system data. I'm going to select no. If you do want to see what would be there, if you select yes, you can click on this show the first report option. Um, you can see it's really not a ton of data that they're even asking for. So if you do feel like sending that in, you can go ahead and do that. And that's the last page of the wizard right here. They say get started with more applications. They have a button to open the app center. I'm gonna click finish here just to close that wizard out and now you can start using the system. And I will just show you three quick features that are brand new in Ubuntu 2404 compared to older versions. First of all, we have the GNOME 46 desktop environment, just a new version of our graphical shell here. It's got some new tweaks in some of the different GNOME apps like the settings app. We have a new system section that consolidates a lot of the stuff if you wanna go and change any of those options. It's funny, GNOME keeps going back and forth between getting rid of settings categories and then adding them again. Most of this is stuff we selected in the installer, but we also have things like easy to set up remote desktop. Another new feature in Ubuntu 2404 is the brand new App Center. This is a completely new app store application, replacing the one in older versions of Ubuntu. I've only used it a little bit so far, but it does seem pretty quick compared to the old one. It's a decent design and you can just go in here and quickly install any app you may want to, both from the default Ubuntu app repositories and the Snap Store that Canonical runs. So you can definitely look through there. There's like thousands of apps in here. So again, not gonna show you every single one. New feature number three is something more under the hood. It's how your network settings are actually stored on disk. So just to show you this, if I go to Etsy NetPlan right here, NetPlan has been around on Ubuntu servers for quite a while, but 2404 is the first time they are unifying it and actually using that by default on the desktop, not just handing over control to the network manager like it used to, but with NetPlan 1.0 actually integrating with network manager so you can use it to set up your configuration if you want to. NetPlan uses a configuration file format called YAML. It's meant to be a little bit more human readable and more item potent, just a little bit easier to set up if somebody's doing advanced things with the networking on their system. But if you're just starting out, you actually don't have to worry about that at all. All your network settings are just gonna be up here in the top right drop down menu. Um, and the settings app if you need to do anything more advanced than that. So that is how to install Ubuntu 2404 on your computer. If you have any questions about using Ubuntu, feel free to leave them in the comments section below or check out the forums that I have on my website, nerdonthestreet.com. I've got a section in the forums for Tech Talk and you're welcome to go in there and ask any questions you have about using Ubuntu and Linux in general on the desktop. If you wanna help me make more videos, feel free to go to nerdclub.nots.co to support me. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe and stay subscribed. I've been doing this for 12 years and I'd like to make YouTube send me one of those silver play buttons. But for now, that's everything I had to show you here. So I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd in the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.